Hi creatives! Hi everyone! Happy to see you here today! Uh, we have an interview today with artist and art educator and her name is Caitlin Eddington. She is a wonderful art educator. She creates uh, different uh, lessons, guides and educational programs for kids and not only kids. So I'm very curious to know today about her sketchbooks and her creative process with uh, working with, with kids because I agree a lot with Caitlin and we'll talk about it today that art is the essential part of development of uh, kids and actually it can be very inspiring and helpful in any age. Uh, if you want, if you don't want to miss any highlights of this uh, live interview, please subscribe to the newsletter. You can find the link in the bio or in the description of this video, uh, and you will get then all the tips and highlights from the interview into your inbox. And we start the very interesting talk with uh, Caitlin. I'm as um, as always. You're very welcome to write any. Uh, questions to Caitlin or me about ah, hi <laughs> hey Paulina hi nice to see you <laughs> nice to see you thanks for having me Thank, thanks for accepting the invitation and for coming because I think you have a very interesting uh, background and actually your profession with this all uh, educational formats uh, I think that uh, we can learn a lot of their behind the scenes of how it works and you have such a big experience um more than 15 years right yeah something like this years in the classroom i know <laughs> oh i love your earrings there so, oh, thank you. Really... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful so uh can you share with us first where everything um where did everything begin and uh, what is your artistic journey this it's 15 years. <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah. Um, well, I, so I am certified um, elementary, well, certified art educator. So I'm certified K to 12. And I always, art has always been a huge part of my life as a child. That was like the subject that I wanted to integrate into everything to make school more interesting for me. And I had some incredible art teachers along the way that I just knew this is what I wanted to do. So I started teaching um, elementary art 15 years ago, well, like 16 years ago. And, um, and it was the best job in the whole world. I loved it so much. Um, and I never, I always just kind of stayed with the elementary kids. I always said I would like to have taught every grade. Um, but Two years ago, I decided to kind of hit pause on teaching because I have my own little ones at home. And I don't know if you know this, but kids are mm. really exhausting sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And to teach all day and then to come home to my own kids, um, I just wanted to feel a little bit more present um, with my own. And so I kind of hit pause in the um, more traditional classroom setting. Um, but now I basically work for myself and I teach really everyone of all ages. So I still do some kid art classes, but in the last two years, I've really found um, a huge love for teaching other adults. And I know this is something that you do as well. And, uh, and it's just so funny because teaching adults who maybe once really enjoyed art as a child, but maybe somebody told them they weren't good when they were a kid or they just, you know, being an adult is hard and it's hard to prioritize things that you once loved. Um, so I'm finding a lot of people that I'm teaching are, are those kind of people, maybe other moms who are like, hey, I give everything all day to somebody else and now I wanna just say yes to me for an hour and do this workshop or, you know, paint together in a live or something like that. And it's really filled my cup in the same way that kids are just so excited to learn something new too. So it's just been really great. I, I just love teaching. It is, it is what makes my heart just <laughs> explode. <laughs> 
Uh, I suppose the difference between uh, teaching adults and kids is uh, pretty big. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, from your experience, what is the main difference between uh, teaching adults and kids? What are your approaches? You know, yeah, it, um, so I think it depends. There's a lot of differences, but also, oddly enough, a lot of similarities. Um, depending on the age of the kid, I would say from up until about like fifth grade, they're genuinely pretty enthusiastic and are really willing to try anything. And they're not they're, they're not self-conscious at all. I mean, they're just like, yep, yeah, that's exciting. I love art. I want to do this. And they're, they wear their heart on their sleeve. Um, you know, and if they're frustrated, they'll express that as well. But I just think they're just so willing to give it a go. Now, around fifth grade is when kids start to get a little bit self-conscious of their work. And they're, they're very aware of their peers. And they can do some kind of self-deprecating, like, oh, mine isn't good you know, just because of that insecurity. And I have found that that's probably the hardest part for adults is if they're trying something new, um, like drawing or painting, um, and especially if they're in like a group setting, uh, it's just easier for us to default to like, oh, I'm, this is gonna be so bad, or, oh, I'm, I know this is gonna be bad, but I just wanted to try it. It's almost like this, like, I, because it's scary. It's scary to try anything new. Um, so, but that is like, that's also the part that I love the most with teaching adults is, is guiding them through that process so that I can still see those light bulbs start to go off and those aha moments, the same I do with kids and seeing them leave a workshop and they're just like, I can't believe I made this, or this has just been so nice. This filled my cup. Like, you know, um, I really try to stress a lot about like art is so much more about the process than the, the end result and if you end up with something that you love and you're so proud of and you want to hang that is incredible but really it's like i think the joy has to come with within and the actual making because that's why we do it i mean if you're an artist like that's you create art for the way that you feel when you're making it you know what i mean and of course it's heightened when you're proud of your work but really you have to like realize that that you're the, the joy is in the making you know yeah i agree i really agree and this is such an interesting topic i also um want to ask you adults who come to you what is uh, their main request i want to draw a still life i want to draw an animal portrait or I just want to play with colors and lines. I just want to feel this creative process. What do they say to you? Yeah, I, I think, um, so I do a couple of different things. Like I do some in-person workshops, but I also teach um, online and I have a, a Patreon, which is more, I think like to the, the second point of what you said, like more exploratory and is more like that is for the people who are like, Hey, I I'm serious about integrating art into my life on a somewhat regular basis. And I'm here for the journey and I'm here for the, the, um, the tips and tricks that are going to help me like make this as a part of my life as like exercise or something like that. Um, but for my workshops that are more like a couple hours or something, I try to pick projects that are go that that are that are going to leave them walking away like feeling proud of themselves because I feel like um, you know the last thing you want is a busy mom who has has like prioritized a night to themselves and and they've given you know they have two hours and they're leaving like oh that was so hard or i hate what i made um even if they're there with girlfriends and things so i try to um pick projects that are really going to connect in a certain way um and so it's a little bit more curated by me i like to give choice a lot we're definitely not doing like step by step okay let's all do the same thing because as an artist you know, there uh, there's different ways you can look at that. I think a certain level of hand holding is important for building confidence, but then also choice in a project is where you can like connect deeper to what you're doing. And so um, I hope that answers your question because it's 
it's not really like an open studio where someone's like, hey, I want to try this. Um, I've certainly had requests for, for like, hey, I would love to learn this topic. And then I, as the educator, work on creating a project that would suit that desire, um, but also then like allow the student to adapt it to what works for them, if, um, if that makes sense. So like, yeah. for example, um, we did a project um, and I have it over, stand by, I'm gonna grab it real quick. <laughs> wow. uh, we have, a, this was my, one of my first projects that I did with adults and it's, um, so it is a, a silhouette. Oh, this is a silhouette I did of my son. And, um, and so I taught this, um, sub this lesson, I call it the growth mindset. Um, I originally just painted it of my, of my own children because it just made me so happy. And then when I shared it online, I had an influx of, um, other moms who were like, oh, you know, wanting to commission and, and yes, that's, that's wonderful. I, but I was like, I know I could teach other men or whoever wants to join me to do this of their own kid and like how empowering and wonderful would that be if if a mom was able to like create something that is meaningful and they're proud of their work so i kind of got you through this project but they use their own photo of their children or dog or even you know like any loved one um and then i guided them through how to create you know the um the gouache plants and just elements of gouache and and things like that so it's like this there is, a, like I said, a certain level of step-by-step, step, but then also we reach the point of the project that everybody is just like head down and quiet and really getting lost in the process. And like, that is the part that just makes me so happy when I see that flow state taking over for people who don't really get to experience it. Cause that's the magic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing and showing this uh, artwork. It's uh, really, really beautiful. And I think it Thank can you. be, I think I can imagine it when you create something uh, like this uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's connected with your child it's like a memory that you take with yourself and it's really very, very yeah. inspiring <laughs> and uh, you also mentioned that uh, you love this sketchbook practices and it mm -hmm. would be very interesting to know about that uh, what helps you to build this habit of uh, keeping the sketchbook of um, drawing there regularly or what, what, yeah. what is your experience with the sketchbooks and how does yeah. it help you? Sure. Well, so when I, when I first started teaching in the classroom, um, again, I was naive to how exhausted I would be. So I really, when I was in my twenties, I would teach all day and come home and people would ask me all the time, like, oh, do you paint? Do you make art? And I, my answer was always like, no, I am too exhausted. I've been talking about art all day. I can't possibly. So, but it's so funny. And I don't know if you have children or if there's people who are watching who have children, like you don't actually realize how much time you have before you have kids. So when I then had my son and I, and I was also still teaching, I went from having like, time to rest and relax, but also um, time I could have been doing other things and I just didn't realize it. And when I had my son in 2016, I felt like a complete, um, I struggled with like, oh my gosh, all of my freedom, my identity, everything is, is gone. Like from the second I open my eyes to the second I go to bed, I am caring for everyone other than myself. And so oddly enough, in that period of time, um, and also like going back to work was really hard and I just was like really struggling. Um, there was, there's an artist that I follow here on Instagram. Her name is uh, Jennifer or Orkin Lewis. So she's like an illustrator and, um, somehow I started following her and she would post like, you know, draw, draw every day kind of thing. Like, and just, it would be these beautiful, quick illustrations and paintings in her sketchbook. And it was like every day she would post them and I would be sitting there, you know, in my classroom, be like pumping and just like missing my son and really struggling. And I would, I would see these images and I was like, I could do that. Like I, I could, I could do that right now while I'm, while I'm 
pumping or, you know, in the morning after I feed my son. And, and I kind of was like, I need this for myself. I need like something that is mine that is going to fill my own cup. That is not going to be a huge commitment. So I just started to see like if I could, if I could make a, a painting or a drawing or something every day. And prior to seeing her work, I never thought about painting in a sketchbook. I always just thought it had to be pencil and it had to be doodles and, you know, preliminary drawings. Cause that's like what my experience of sketchbooking was. And, um, and so I just every day in that difficult period, whether it was like feeding my son first thing at like five in the morning, I would put on a pot of coffee and I would sit and I would give myself 30 minutes or 40 minutes or something. And I would draw or paint in the morning before I would go to work. And like the difference in my whole outlook of, of life and mood um, was night and day. And I felt like re-energized going to school and I was so excited for my students because it was like something to look forward to the next day of like, oh, what am I gonna paint tomorrow? And I actually started thinking about art more for myself. Um, and now, like, it's just funny. I was just, look, I just grabbed a couple of my sketchbooks and it's like, it became like <laughs> a crazy habit of when I missed a day, I felt, I just didn't feel myself. I didn't feel like the best version that I could. And so I kind of started that habit and I, and you really have to carve out the time. Like people who say like, I don't have time for art or exercise or whatever it is, that can be true. So like you have to, if it's a priority, you have to prioritize it. Like you have to carve out the time. So for me, the only time I could seem to get a second of alone time was in the morning, I would wake up early before I went to my job. And that was when I started having my sketchbook practice. And I would create like an invitation for myself almost to like break that barrier of, I think people like, like, oh, I would love to paint or I'd love to draw, but it sometimes it just feels like, oh, I have to get out all my supplies and I have to get out my paper. And especially if you're gonna pull it like a canvas or something, that can be super intimidating. And there's so much pressure to like, I don't wanna mess this up. This is a big thing. So what I um, started doing was just really using like small A5 sketchbooks because it was a size that I felt like I could um, actually get something done with. So um, let me just, I'm just like grabbing one here. So like this is a painting and this is a, a spread and I'm forever, I'm jealous that you're, you know, um, <laughs> we're in your, I'm forever wishing I lived in London or Scotland or Ireland or like anywhere abroad. Um, but I felt like even if it was like a, a half of a page or something like that, um, I I could do it in a reasonable <laughs> amount of time. This is from our, our honeymoon when we were in the English countryside. Um, but I felt like I could I could actually like get feel that accomplishment of getting something done working on a, in a smaller uh, um, size. Um, and so that's just how the practice started. And my son is eight now, which is crazy. And I just have kept. I mean, it's it's had some highs and lows, and I've certainly missed some plenty of days. I felt very uninspired during the height of the pandemic, but I have reprioritized art making for myself in the last few years. And the really wonderful part about it is not only do I I feel like I can um, like I, I get to like document things that I'm kind of um, going through. I'm just trying to like find a quick example. So like, you know, this was, um, I have an totally. elderly dog. <laughs> I have an elderly dog now. And I find myself just like watching her all the time and, and really like just wanting to integrate her into and drawing her when she's sleeping. And it helps me to feel like completely present in my body in the moment than if I were just to take a picture and and I have now that I have kids um I keep my sketchbook with me still all the time and they keep and and we have sketchbooks for them and it's funny sometimes I'm like oh do you guys want to make art and they blow me off but if they wake up and they find me painting outside or or sitting in the kitchen and drawing instantly and they will slide up next to me and they're like mommy can I draw with you and I mean talk about 
just my heart exploding because modeling is like the ultimate way that you can inspire somebody, you know? And I just, as a mom, I'm like, there's always an open table. There's always supplies out. Like we always, you know, we just in encourage it through that, through that modeling. And my husband's a, um, a graphic designer. And so he's always, you know, he has uh, different ways that he draws and sketches, but, um, we really try to make it like a part of our family now. So that's been the best part, I think. <laughs> that's so wonderful. Actually, everything what you shared with your sketchbook practice is so related uh, to me, to my story, because uh, I started the same when I, I just uh, understood that I have to, if I want to draw, yeah. find time for myself, I have to schedule this time and just to, put it into my schedule block, uh, have this block of time. And then I also started with the small sketchbooks, even smaller than, than these yeah. ones. <laughs> I've it's seen your, I love yeah. them with like, oh, they're perfect. Thank you. <laughs> it is, and I agree that it's really important to make it more accessible. So put everything that you can easily grab art materials yeah. in uh, any moment. So you just prepare everything for this to happen because otherwise you will find uh, many reasons something will happen and you just then say, oh, I don't have time for that. Oh, but I'm it's, sure. it, yeah. but it depends. Yeah, I, I, I... I completely agree. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's just funny because like, I think, I think that is literally the biggest barrier is like the feeling of overwhelm of like, well, well, and that's a, that's something too, that I get asked all the time of like, well, what do you draw? And also like, what do you recommend? And, um, it's funny in these last two years that I've stepped away from the classroom, I've really been just like, how can I make art as accessible as possible to anyone who has the desire whether you're three or you're 93 like if you have that passion and desire how can i make that easier for you and so actually my husband and i um because again he's a designer so he also grew up like leaning on art and really you know he was a kid who loved to doodle and he didn't know what to do with it and then it wasn't until he was in the military that he was like oh wait like learned about it designer and what does that do and it's just he has like a, a different journey but it's similar in a lot of ways and so we actually um just kind of we just developed this um sketchbook case that like we had the idea um because i would always bring my sketchbook with me with like in a in you know some supplies in a pencil bag and i'd be digging through it all the time and it was fine but I was like, what if we just had something that like you could just grab and it's all right there. And so um, we call it our like our sketchbook carrier case, but really it's like, it has things. That, yeah, thanks. And I keep like my travel gouache set in here and um, it's not in here now, but you can like kind of loop your sketchbook right in the middle. And this, when we were kind of developing this idea and I had the prototypes, it like took my own practice to like another level because it was so easy. Like it just was like, there's no excuse. You know, if I'm sitting at the park and I'm watching my kids play, I could pull out my phone and mindlessly scroll like so many of us do. We're all guilty of it. Or I could pull out my sketchbook case and as easy as pulling out my phone, I can just open my sketchbook and I can, I can either draw something, you know, whether it's like, doodling, writing, like, I just talk to my own kids about this all the time. Like, do you want to create or do you want to just only consume? You know, like, where, what do you want to do with this one life that you have? And it's like, the, when you think about the amount of time that we waste just like consuming these days, whether it's, you know, social media and, and I know that's like, there is an element of irony because you and I both have our business you know, as a big part of social media. And I think it it's, has so many benefits, but also like as artists, the beauty is around us. And like, we just have to put our head up and notice the beauty to capture it. You know what I mean? Like there's just so many beautiful moments um, around us. And uh, so it's just been, it's been great for a, a lesson for my own kids. They have their own cases. We keep them in the car, you know? So it's just great that they can, have that practice too. 
That's so inspiring. <laughs> I hope that uh, after today's live, uh, more people will take their sketchbooks and art materials to the park or somewhere yeah. to put in into your um, backpack. <laughs> to yeah, you. and that's just, that's all it is. Is like just a little bag, you know. Throw it in there, and it it can just be a pencil or. Um, and I think you have to find the supply. I think this is important too. You yeah. have to find the supply that speaks to you. And I think you do a lot of like paint pens. Is that correct? Like yeah. Posca pens. And um, I, I also love Posca pens, but it's funny, like, I always have been a painter and that was the barrier for me. I was like, I love to paint, but I can't just like, if I can't like bring all, lug all my stuff out to the park. And so what I adapted was like, oh, I, you know, I started with a watercolor, like a travel watercolor set. And it wasn't this quite the same as oils, but then I was introduced to gouache and I was like, okay, I, I like gouache. I can layer, it dries quickly. And I found what works for me of just keeping it, keeping gouache pre-poured in a little travel set that I can, again, just as easily throw in my case or a, pencil case or whatever you want to do. And I started using like a water brush. I never really used a water brush before, but again, it was like breaking that barrier of like, I want to paint. Do I have two hours in a perfect studio situation with my kids not bothering me? No, I don't. But I have 20 minutes sitting in the car rider line waiting to get my son. You know, I could, I could sit here and paint, you know, or uh, instead of doing something that just isn't going to like help me grow or benefit as a person. <laughs> So. Yeah, I, I I agree that it's really important to find your art materials and to find the convenient ones for you and for that. And nowadays it's really easy. There are so many options of the, all these travel formats and all the pen formats. Uh, so mm -hmm. just <laughs> explore <laughs> what we have. Yeah, I think you just have to like do a little bit of research and, and kind of digging. And I, I try to share as often as I can on my blog of like, um, what supplies like I reach for, but I think it, it really is your own preference. And I think once you are in tune to like, oh, I really like using um, like a micron pen and I really like pen work, like great. All you have to do is like keep a pen in your purse, keep a small travel sketchbook near you mm -hmm. or in your bag. And like, that's all you need, you know? And instead of reaching for your phone, reach for your sketchbook, you know, and, and yeah, there's been times people have looked at me like I have, you know, two heads in a doctor's office <laughs> sitting and drawing and waiting, but I'm also like, this is when I create art, it's one of the few things that I, the more energy I pour into it, the more I energy I get back. Like I feel, I feel like my mood is elevated. I feel just like genuinely like I have more energy or more re relaxation. It reduces my anxiety. It, it quells. It's funny. Our brand is quell um, for our sketchbook case, but like it really quells the, the overthinking and the noise and the, you know, things, especially as women or mothers, like we're, you know, we always have a million to do lists. And like, when I am creating art, it is like, peace yeah. you know it is true yeah. con contentment yeah. it so. helps helps to relax and just be yeah. in the mo in the moment yeah um yeah. as you have a really huge experience uh, in teaching others and if we talk about adults uh have you noticed that uh, maybe they give their feedback to you that oh i, I feel now so relaxed or calmer or more joyful after the classes how often does it happen? Uh, and um, did you make maybe kind of research on how does it work? Uh, how everything's yeah. connected? <laughs> how it yeah, makes you more confident? Right, right. Yeah, I do feel like I, I do get that feedback. And it's, again, it's interesting, like kids, when you teach kids, you you teach them how to draw something and they love it. And they'll tell you the instant it comes to your brain. They're like, I love this, this is adding to I love you, you know, they'll just really make you feel like, uh, you know, you're a superhero. And with, uh, you know, anyone, adolescents and sometimes adults, like sometimes it's like, um, you're feeling it, but maybe there's, it's more complicated. Emotions and human emotions can get more complicated. So when I do get those, um, that, that, um, 
you know, that reflection of some people, um, it really is, I love it. I value it so much. And there was a mom at a, um, who came to one of my workshops and she was the one, one of the ones at first who was like, oh, you know, don't judge mine. Don't look at it. I'm here for the one. Like she was making all these like silly kind of excuses. And then she was one of the last ones to leave. And she pulled me aside at the end and just said, like, I don't remember the last time I was able to do something like this for myself. And I really enjoyed it. And uh, and then I got an email from somebody else uh, the next day that just said, like, I just want you to know I spent the whole drive home just smiling and just like feeling so good. And I just didn't realize how much my soul needed something like this. And, and that just is like, I get chills, you know, thinking about it. Um, and I think it's because like, yeah, hopefully they're proud of their work, but it's more the, again, like to back to like the way art makes you feel i i tell my students and anyone all the time like this is why art therapy is a thing this is why art therapy is real because like if you've gone through trauma or you're trying to process things like sometimes for me when i'm like busying my hands and using my hands like again that kind of helps like soften everything going on like from my from my shoulders up um so yeah, it is it is nice to get those those remarks and also like with my um group of Patreon friends um you know we meet tw uh twice a month and um and work in our sketchbooks together and I've had students who who uh who are also te a lot of wonderful incredible art teachers who pour in all day and they're like I don't make art for myself anymore and um and they'll share their process and they're like, I just can't believe how much I've grown. And I think that's also why I love sketchbooks so much. And even when I was in the elementary room, like we kept sketchbooks from kindergarten up because I always talk about your sketchbook is the ultimate place to document your growth. Like your first sketchbook, the first page of your first sketchbook and compare it to, you know, the last page of a sketchbook five years later i mean it is in it you can't not feel proud of yourself because you see so much growth and it's like you don't have to you don't need to lean on me to tell you you're doing a good job like you can see it yourself you know and you can um and i love that i love that like tangible aspect of like wow and kids can you know look through and evaluate themselves and um and not only that it, it also what i love about a sketchbook too is like Nobody has to see this if I don't want them to. This could be my own diary, my journal, um, documentation of what I'm going through. If I wanna share it, I can. But um, it is like a, such a nice way to feel, like it's like a safe place to practice and try new things and experiment without the judgment of others and also the fear of like, messing up and um like i said if you're thinking about a canvas if you're pulling out a canvas like that just feels like so much pressure and i also i paint all the time and even still when i pull out a canvas i'm like oh man okay here we go you know because it is another level of pressure whereas with a sketchbook like you hate your drawing you turn the page and i i always try to tell people like never rip anything out because you want to be able to like look back and reflect on on things that you learned from um but I and I love what I love about it. And what I've noticed my students love is even though we'll do a whole year at the elementary level of, of projects, the thing they're most excited to take home at the end of the year is their sketchbook, because this is the place that's just so much more personal, you know, to, to your question a while back of like, oh, you know, students who want to explore things like oh, I want to do landscape or I want to practice shading like this is their place to do that. It is it is like a safe place. And, and also it's such a nice like document of a period of time. You know, I, again, like I look back at sketches that I did when I was a new mom, it's a lot of motherhood related drawings. And now it's, you know, my crazy kids running around and on a playground and trying to <laughs> do my best to capture them with quick gesture drawings. But it's a, it's a nice way to, to really like commemorate a moment. Oh. I agree with everything you are saying, actually, because <laughs> I teach my students the same things. Uh, and uh, maybe someone who is uh, now listening to us and think, okay, uh, Caitlin, Paulina, I will start the sketchbook, but uh, 
how to start <laughs> like have start. this yeah this brand new sketchbook it can be really scary this bl first blank white page <laughs> do, yes. you have, do you have any favorite practices or tips that you share with your uh, students I do. It's funny. When I was teaching, I, I taught a sketchbook class uh, last summer, like intro to sketchbooking. And it's funny. I usually tell everyone, like, skip your first page because that's the <laughs> yeah. literally don't even don't even do it. Because, again, like that fear of like opening your book and seeing like something you hate is it really is like a mental gymnastics game. And so skip it and and then you feel a little bit more kind of confident. But, you know, the thing is about a sketchbook, like it can be literally anything that you want. There are some mornings I wake up and I'm like, I have nothing in my head and I'll see my daughters in a rainbow dress and I'm like, okay, let me just fill a page in rainbows. Like it can be something so simple with like, what is one thing? So, oh my gosh, I'm talking to the, the Mecca, the queen of patterns here like patterns in general are so relaxing and meditative. And, you know, if you don't have the, like the capacity in that moment to think about like something grand, you can think like, well, what is something that I could, you know, repeat, well, give me an option to explore color theory, or it would give me an option to explore materials. Like maybe you're drawing the same subject, but like different supplies to kind of play around. Um, so I think my advice is skip your first page. Second, find a supply that you are interested in. Um, maybe it's something you've already used as a, even as a kid, it could be Crayola markers. Or if you're like, hey, I've always wanted to try out um, paint pens. So what person? Uh, I think I can hear you. Uh, I'm sure. Please write in the comments if you can hear Caitlin. Oh. Can you guys hear me? Oh, sorry. yeah. No, no. Oh, no, we can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> sorry. You know no what? I, you know, I thought I turned it off. I have a limit of like Instagram, uh, like how long I'm uh, allowed to be on okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it um it went off so I was like oh no 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 <laughs> um <laughs> sorry Don't worry. About that. um but yeah find a supply that you're interested in or if you are like want to treat yourself sometimes that all is all it takes is like ooh I've been wanting to try these new supplies I'm gonna just like get them because don't underestimate the value of like an exciting art material. Go buy those pens that you want to try. Go buy, you know, it can be something small. I think like the supply is a huge pull into the practice. And if you want, you know, um, to work on building confidence, there are, of course, like so many wonderful like, drawing tutorials and things, whether it's on YouTube or um, Instagram or courses and things. Um, I mean, I, I make really simple drawing guides. I've made them for kiddos um, for years. And the amount of people that have also said to me, like, I bought these for my students, but I I actually use them more, you know? So again, like a, a simple way of just kind of like building that confidence. So if you're like, I, I love, uh, one of my favorite things is like to draw and paint plants and really sometimes like simple illustrations. And so like start simple and kind of build up from there. And I also think follow artists online. If you're going to let yourself be on social media and consume, make sure it's people that inspire you and, and make you excited to want to create something yourself. Like that, I curated my feed long ago um, with things that spark joy in me and things that inspire me. And it's really a lot of artists, illustrators, um, because every time I see an artist who is making something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. You know, and maybe it is trying a style that they're doing or a subject and you can pull inspiration from people you see, um, when it comes to your own personal practice. So like, yeah, I, I think like, like that's one of my like top tips and there's some also like really great books out there too of just kind of like helping you get started um but i think the for the heart the first step is the hardest and that's literally making the first mark you know making the first page and keep it simple but i promise you if you kind of set that goal of like i'm gonna set a timer 
And that's another thing too. Yeah. I actually keep it. I keep a timer with me and or your phone timer. I think with limitation it gives more creativity. So whether it's like that's why I like my quell case because I will put in like five different colored markers and a couple colored pencils. And, and if I'm out and about, it's like, okay, well, I don't have every color in the rainbow, but with these these colors, I can create now a picture that is cohesive and it kind of it, it forces you to kind of limit and and it gives you more op like it really gives you more options actually when you have that limitation. So set a timer, say I'm gonna pour my cup of coffee and I'm gonna draw for 20 minutes this morning. You know, and whatever that is. And so I think just like, because again, if you have like so much time, it's easy to get caught up and then feel like you're never finished. And I think just, um, I don't know, I've heard from a lot of different people. It's like, you can't wait for the inspiration to come. You have to do the action first and then inspiration comes. So like, if you're just sitting around like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. You're never gonna think of it, but it's like, okay, every day I'm sitting and drawing or painting, I don't know what it's gonna be yet. Just go with something and then the inspiration will come. And then, and creativity is like a muscle, you know? Like the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets and the more ideas, like all of a sudden the floodgates come and you're like, there's not enough time to make all this art that I wanna make, you know? But you have to, you have to build that up. I think you have to build up the endurance of it a little bit. Yeah, I also see this that limits in time uh, really helps, especially with people who tend to do everything perfect. I also yes. suggest them just to putting like a timer and make the limit of the colors. And, the, and they say that it works for them. And yeah. about uh, making uh, art like a, a kind of something that, that is scheduled uh, i think there are two approaches one of them is do it daily for mm -hmm. from 1 to 3 p.m i don't know in the morning and it really yeah. wor it works and uh, at the beginning it kind of feel like a word like when you're waiting for inspiration and you're thinking mm -hmm. okay i have an idea that art is something with is really very really connected with the inspiration and mm -hmm. how I can do it uh, with timer scheduled and uh, with the, all this limit. But then you see that when you start to do it, it's really like any other skill. Mm -hmm. But I, I would add that, uh, that there's also another approach when people really feel like in the moment that now I feel inspired, really inspired with this full of energy and I want to draw something crazy, like just trust, try, trusting my emotions yes. and it also works. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I also try to do that too. I try to like, when you, when you put your head up and you look around and you notice things like now it's funny. I, um, you know, I love that of course with like an iPhone or something, you can take a picture wherever you want. There are so many times I'm out, like whether it's in nature or, you know, somewhere outside, I'm very inspired by for sure being more outside. Um, and there are so many times where I'll like, I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. And I'll be like, oh, I wish I had my sketchbook. Like I'll be so like, cause I try to keep it with me so often that I'm almost like now, if I can't capture it with my hands, um, I get like, I get really bummed about it because I feel like when I take a picture, it just like, doesn't, it doesn't do the same for me. It doesn't, it goes into an endless abyss of, you know, photos on your phone that you forget that you probably have. And um, I think the one thing I'm like most excited about coming up is um, next, this upcoming summer, I'm going to host my first art retreat. And I am so genuinely excited about it because every time I travel, like the way that I want to capture travel is through my hands and through my sketchbook. Like I want everyone to leave me alone. I just want to sit. I want to sit at a cafe. I want to draw like, like that to me is like fully taking in where I am and like imprinting that memory like into my my system. But again, a lot of times like life is so fast and you want to see it all and you want to you got to go, go, go. We've got, you know, so I'm so excited about this opportunity to travel somewhere I've never been with the only intention of of creating art with with others like I mean that's like the absolutely like the only thing better for me than like making art um and drawing in my sketchbook outside is 
having the shared experience with somebody else. And like, it's hard to find that sometimes it's, you know, we, I have like so many wonderful friends, but it's, there's only a few people you can really call and be like, Hey, do you want to sit outside for two hours and draw and paint with me next to me? We don't even have to talk. Like we just be, you know, <laughs> um, so to have that, you know, to be able to travel in that manner of like being able to like take it all in, um, it, I'm just, I can't be, I'm just so excited about it because it's like, it's the way I've always wanted to travel, but, um, you know, finally get to do it with other people who also want to. Yeah. There's a question in the comment, uh, oh, sure. where, are you tra where are you traveling and can you share more about your art retreat? Oh, sure. I am um, I'm so excited. We're going to the south of France. So mm -hmm. it'll be um, in Nice to start and um, for a few days and then we'll travel to Provence and we'll spend the rest of the retreat there. It's about seven days. Um, I didn't want to do something that was like, go, go, go. We're always, you know, on a bus traveling. I really wanted to be able to like take it at a slow pace, like fully take it in. Um, at the moment it is sold out. Um, I have a wait list, but I, um, it, I'm just, I'm over the moon excited about it. And, uh, and I'm excited because like, this will be the um, first opportunity that, again, my husband and I with our, our company Quell, like we're creating products right now. That's like, this is, this is why, so that on our art retreat, everybody's gonna have their case. Um, we're working on like a sketchbook bag again that you can like have with you that just breaks that barrier and is like so easy just to like plop it in a beautiful place and and paint or draw and and take in take it all in. Um, so yeah. how do how do you organize it? Do you make it uh, by your own or do you work together with another company who is working on retreat organizing the retreats? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, so we, I'm working with a company called Trova Trip, oh. and I don't know if you heard of it. There, I, um, I think I had seen it around, but uh, they had reached out to me, and yeah. and it really felt like the best possible scenario because I'm not the best planner. I mean. I don't love planning things like that. Usually my husband, he's like, yep, I got it. So we had talked about it as like an ultimate pipe dream idea. I'm like, one day I want to host an art retreat and you can plan the whole thing. And I just show up and paint with everybody. Um, and so the fact that they, um, they pretty much do that for you. So yeah. they, I told them what I was looking for. We found an itinerary that really was in line with what I was hoping and the oper and the experience I want to provide. Um, and so, so yeah, so it's, um, so far, it's still a good amount of way. Um, I wish it was like tomorrow, but I do have a lot of teachers who are part of my online community. And so um, it really had to be something like with the timing um, in the summer for us. So it is next July, but I'm hoping, um, I would love to be able to do something like this, you know, annually or I don't know. I mean, whatever kind of works for us, but it's a dream. I can't wait. <laughs> I also was contacted by tra uh, travel. Tra uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and we're also <laughs> talking uh, talking about making an art retreat, which which is also sound for me very inspiring. Uh, yeah. And I would love to hear about your experience. Yeah. As you already sure. scheduled it, but I have a question. You said next July, and it's already sold out. Uh, sold out there. Yeah. yeah we <laughs> We launched it in um, May of last, like was last May, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, it, we, I, the minimum we needed was like twelve to make mm -hmm. it happen, and it's capped at twenty, and it was sold out within the hour. So, um, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, with one of those things, like you know, it's a, it can be a, it's a huge commitment for so many people, whether it's like time and childcare and financial. And it was one of those things that I was like, I have no idea <laughs> how this is gonna go. Um, and thankfully, I, I just couldn't be more um, grateful that others wanna share this experience with me. So yeah, I would definitely recommend looking into um, their, their, the company Trover Trip. I mean, they're, so far they've been wonderful.
wonderful. So, and just like a ton of communication and, and really their main thing is like, we want to take the stress out of the, the mm -hmm. planning so that you can fully be present and focus on, on your time with your, um, the people that are traveling with you, which is all I want anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's like a hundred percent. I don't want and there's like a guide um, that is with you on the ground. So that also is, is great. So um, yeah, hopefully it all goes well. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and really happy for you because I'm sure it would, would, will be a wonderful experience for you and for your students because it's something new, this it's travel together, this uh, drawing. So it's kind of really new experience. All, all of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really grateful that, um, you know, I, I loved my I loved my job so much in the classroom. But you know, things in life like they can ebb and flow and change. And um, and I just felt like, and with my husband's like full support, he was very supportive of just like this new chapter. And I just love that I'm still able to teach because that is my heart first is like the teacher first and then the artist. Um, and I'm just, I love that I can have an opportunity to do that, but with like a different, different demographic and, and different people, it's filling my cup in the same way it does with kiddos. So I just love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's almost an hour past. So fast. <laughs> <laughs> I saw we were just chatting it up. <laughs> Uh, then the last question, um, what advice would you give to someone that's only starting their artistic journey? And maybe what would you say, tell to yourself when you are at the beginning of your artistic journey? What would you love to know at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, well, there's so many ways you could look at it. Like, I mean, I think about myself as a child who just found my love of art like it came so naturally and i think um i just was so grateful to have people in my life to foster that and um especially in school like there was times that it just like felt like a struggle and so i think the fact that my parents and were just so like this is something that you love and you know i, I it's amazing like that your inner critic, like it's, it, it really is incredible when people around you are just like telling you and reminding you like, yeah, this is, this is, you're doing great, you know, like then you believe it. And I think just like having that confidence in yourself because that a hundred percent led me to my career. And, um, but I just, I think like for somebody who, uh, whether you're a child or an adult, like, I think, I think the heart, like, and the hardest part is is making that is is that first blank page is that first blank paper page canvas um it is insane the roadblock that can really get in the way and so i think just take away take completely take off the pressure of something being perfect because perfection does not exist and when i started like i said when i started started following Jennifer Orkin Lewis, August Wren is her handle on Instagram. Her style was so different than mine. I, we're talking about the perfectionism. Like I am a perfectionist. Like everything that I drew, college, everything had to be perfectly shaded, like very realistic. And I would just obsess over that. And when I saw how loose and free and um, fluid her paintings were, I was, and I loved them. I was just so drawn to, I actually have a painting of hers, like sitting right here in my, in my studio, because it just, I love it. It, that gave me the permission to like, just do it. Just, just literally do it. Nothing. There's no, nothing lost, but only so much to gain. And if I hadn't started that sketchbook practice back when I was in the trenches of motherhood, I would not have anything that I have today. I will tell you that fully candidly because so many of the, whether it was like lesson plans that came to my head for my students, like started in my sketchbook, you know, I would like draw or paint something and, I, and then I'd like, oh, this would be a really cool lesson. So like that would turn into there or that um, my workshop with the growth mindset, like my love and experimentation of gouache came from playing in my sketchbook. 
I would have never had the guts to just like buy a new supply and be like, I'm going to do this thing. And then I, I just like, you put so much pressure on yourself. Um, so I just say like embrace the process find things materials and that you love and you want to play with and just like embrace the play aspect of it go into it thinking like nothing could come out of this but am i going to enjoy this next hour is it going to relax me is it going to make me feel like i've done something with my time like that's that i'm proud of then then great that's awesome and then if it turns into like i really love this and i want to foster it more and i want to get better at it and I want to open an Etsy shop. Like it's amazing the dominoes that can fall when you just say yes to yourself. Like say yes to yourself, deserving the time and deserving the, like to, it just fills my cup. I know that's like, it's such an overused phrase. It's like, fill your, you have to fill your cup first before you fill others. But seriously, the days I wake up, you know, if I oversleep, and I wake up with my kids, it is like a fire drill. You know, we're all just like, oh, we're frantic and like, I'm irritable. And I, you know, whereas like when I give myself the time and for me, it's just like the morning is something that I just got into that habit of. It like everything just is like so much better <laughs> from there, you know? And so I think you just have to say yes and like that you are worthy and you're deserving of, of trying something that you, um, that you love and enjoy. Oh, yeah. Thank so you so much. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Actually, I'm so amazed uh, because we, I t today all you shared, I agree with with everything, oh, and good. it's so si similar to my view of how I teach and uh, what I share with my students. Uh, mm -hmm. So many similarities in the approaches we we see it and we. Um, uh, create and share this creative process with others. So for me, it was uh, a pleasure <laughs> to listen to every, yeah. <laughs> everything you told us today. Yeah. That makes <laughs> me so happy because it really is like, and sometimes like even as teachers and experienced artists, like sometimes you, you need also that help. And I, I also talk to about my students a lot, like the creative roller coaster. I even have like a visual in my, it was for my students, like my teachers pay teacher store. It's like, it is not linear. You start off and you're like, this is going to be awesome. I'm having so much fun. And then you, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? This is terrible. I ruined it. But like, you just have to trust the process and like, keep going because then you will ultimately find your way into, into something you're proud of. And if, and I, I would tell my students too, cause they would say like, does this look done? And I'm like, well, are you, are you proud? And they're like, oh, no, not yet. I'm like, okay, well then keep working on it. Like you want to foster that, that internal like pride as opposed to like the external, like, will somebody like it? Will somebody buy it? I think you have to love it deeply yourself before you can expect somebody else to appreciate it. So that's like, I think that's like the real makings of an artist is like, get rid of the noise and focus on, on the, the process. Mm -hmm. So. I hope uh, after today's live, uh, at least one person will write in the, their planner or something like, yes. okay, time for sketchbook. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And just get a sketchbook on Amazon. I have, um, I actually am working on a blog right now of um, like my favorite, again, like my go-to sketchbooking supplies. And they're only based on my personal preference. Um, but again, like things that are, um, that I have found that like have helped me in my journey, but it's all subjective and it could be totally different for anyone. But if you're looking for a place to start, I, I try to blog pretty frequently of just like things to help like break barriers and like the benefits of just whether it's for kids or it's for adults, it's like, we're all human and we all have that, you know, that primal desire to create. And that's something I think we have to like, just say yes to in a very busy, productivity world we have to just like let ourselves like experiencing experience that um ability to create so thank you caitlin it was sure. a, it's a big pleasure to talk with you and uh, i hope this was inspiring for others and helpful i'm sure actually <laughs> that it was super yeah. helpful uh yeah. and if you if you have any questions uh, who, who is listening for this uh, still have any question you can write them in the comments i will post this recording on the instagram and then on youtube so you can contact with me or caitlin and 
Hope to see you one more time. Awesome. Same to <laughs> you. Of, Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you so much for having me. I admire your work and everything that you do. And um, so it's just so nice to talk to a like-minded individual. So <laughs> yeah, <thank laughs> everyone needs to get out there and start making some art. As yeah. simple as it is. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Have a wonderful sure. day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>